There's a new trend in micro quadcopters and I freaking love it. The trend is that you take the DJI 03 air unit and you slap it in like an 85 millimeter quadcopter frame. And what you end up with is a small, lightweight quadcopter that can still record 4K 120fps at the high end and transmit 1080p 100fps back to your goggles. It's kind of like you're getting the best of both worlds. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. This is the Happy Model Mobula 8 digital HD version. If you were to try and take the DJI 03 air unit and put it in a 75 millimeter platform like this Rotoriot Vision 40 or this Beta FPV Mobula 7, you would find that the motors on that platform really struggle with the weight of the 03 air unit. The 85 millimeter platform and the corresponding motors and props are really the smallest size that handles the weight of the 03 air unit without a lot of compromises. I know somewhere out there, there's someone who's put an O3 on a 75 millimeter quad and they'll rave about how great it flies and how wrong I am. That's okay, this is just my opinion. So we've got 1103 sized motors. That means they are 11 millimeters in diameter and three millimeters in height. They are rated at 11,000 kV, and if you know about battery specs, you know that suggests that we're going to be using a two-cell battery. That is, in fact, the truth. Uh, Happy Model recommends a 450 milliamp hour 2S battery. And we are pairing those motors with these two-inch tri-blade props. And, of course, we're going to take that outside, and we're going to see how it flies a little later in the video. The flight controller is the Happy Model F405 all-in-one. All-in-one means that the flight controller and the ESC that drives the motors is built into a single board. The ESC is rated for 12 amps, which is going to be plenty for the motors and props and weight of this quadcopter, and it runs BLHeli S firmware. Actually, that's not 100% true. BLHeli S ESCs can all be flashed to the open source BlueJay firmware, which gives some performance and feature enhancements. For example, BlueJay firmware will support bi-directional D-Shot, which is a thing that makes your quad fly better, but BLHeli S doesn't support it. BlueJay does. BlueJay also has the ability to change the PWM frequency of the motors, and you, get, you can uh, have custom startup sounds, like you play different music when you first plug in. It remains to be seen whether... Happy Model has actually taken advantage of any of these features, but it is nice that they are pre-flashing the, the ESC with BlueJay instead of just delivering it with the stock firmware and making you do the upgrade for yourself. This flight controller has an Express LRS receiver built in as well, so you're really not going to need to have any other hardware on this quadcopter other than the video transmitter and the camera, which you will select based on which video system you're using. We are, of course, using the DJI 03 video transmitter and camera, but they also sell it with HD0 and walk snail. And that's exciting because there's, well, there's more and more walk snail bind and flies ready to buy, but there aren't as many HD0 bind and flies. And it's nice for people who fly the HD0 system to have that as an option. You can buy the Happy Model Mobula 8 Digital HD with the video transmitter pre-installed. And you can do that with all three of the video transmitters that you heard me mention there. In addition, they sell this version, which is made for the O3 Air unit and comes without the video transmitter. So if you've got an O3 sitting around, you can just buy this standalone kit and put your own O3 into it. It does come with a plug specifically for the O3 Air unit, so it'll be ready to go, no soldering. Getting back to the receiver though, uh, the flight controller comes with an Express LRS receiver built in. Express LRS is a extremely high performance, long range, great penetration control link. Of course, you will need to have a, a controller with an Express LRS module built in or an Express LRS module in the module bay. Uh, and those are becoming more and more common these days. Express LRS is really the standard these days for micro quadcopters because it's open source and so it's pretty easy for manufacturers to build the receiver into their flight controller and save you the hassle of having to install an extra piece of hardware. It's unfortunate that uh, Happy Model has included such a chintzy antenna. Don't get me wrong, the actual performance of this antenna is going to be fine, but the durability 
is not great in my experience. Uh, eventually these little wire antennas do break off. I have seen people take the antenna and kind of, I've, I've done this, and lay it against the board with, conform, like you can formal coat the board and then you lay the antenna down on the board and you can formal coat it so it sort of sticks to the board and then it doesn't break but it also has worse range because it's stuck up against the PCB. And that's just, I just wish that they would ship it with a UFL connector and an external antenna. I'm not even sure if there's really room to put a UFL connector. Oh well, maybe that's why they didn't do it that way. You're gonna get great range and penetration out of this. It, we would get better range and penetration with an external antenna and I'm really aware of the durability implications of this. It's too bad. Uh, good, good news though, the Express LRS receiver that is on this flight controller is a serial Express LRS receiver. The alternative to that would be an SPI-based Express LRS receiver, and uh, those are worse, sir. It's better to have a serial one, uh, and if you want to know more about why that is, it's a pretty esoteric topic, but I've got a video about why SPI-based Express LRS receivers are bad. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to check it out. Don't go check it out. It's, I mean, whatever. Before I can take this outside and fly it, there's a little bit of setup I need to do, and that'll give me the perfect opportunity to take a look at how Happy Model has configured this and see if there's anything uh, for me to complain about. Or, or compliment, but probably complain, mostly complaining. <coughs> and the first thing I notice is that they're shipping it with Betaflight 432 on it. Uh, Betaflight 4.3 is not the latest version of Betaflight. The latest is Betaflight 4.4, but a lot of manufacturers of bind and flies are holding back on flashing the very latest version because they, it's a little bit less stable than 4.3. There are a couple little issues that have popped up. I prefer Betaflight 4.4, especially for my digital birds because it supports high definition canvas on the OSD or on-screen display. If we go here to the OSD tab, you can see that this this is the on-screen display that you will see in your goggles while you're flying. And it is a standard definition 4.3 uh, um, on-screen display, not a widescreen 16.9 on-screen display. All of the digital systems use widescreen goggles, and so it's nice to have a widescreen OSD so you can take those OSD elements and push them out to the edges of the screen instead of having them clustered in the center. Betaflight 4.3 can't do that, Betaflight 4.4 can, and so I'm always happy when I see a digital bird come shipped with Betaflight 4.4 pre-installed. However, we are not <laughs> going to flash Betaflight 4.4 and just wipe the configuration off this thing and start from scratch. Don't do that. If you are perfectly comfortable upgrading a Betaflight quadcopter and moving the configuration from one version, firmware version to another, then go ahead. But if you're just a beginner who's bought this and wants to have a good time, you may not realize that when you update the firmware on this, it'll wipe the configuration completely out and it won't work anymore. And I don't know how you would be supposed to know that except that I just told you. We're gonna leave that alone. Here in the configuration tab, I am happy to see that they've set the maximum arm angle to 180 degrees. What that does is it lets the quadcopter arm when it is not perfectly flat and level. And that's nice because a lot of times, especially with a smaller quadcopter, when you set it down, it'll kind of be tilted because it's leaned on a rock or a lump in the ground or something, uh, and it won't arm. But by setting this to 180 degrees, it allows it to arm even when it's a little bit tilted. Um, I would change this setting here, the D-Shot Beacon configuration. I would enable RX Lost and RX Set. What that's going to let the quadcopter do is beep the motors when the motors are capable of acting like a speaker coil and going beep, beep, beep. And that's useful, especially with smaller quads when you crash them or land them in the grass somewhere and you can't find them. They can start beeping and you can hear them and that can help you out. I always turn that on on any quadcopter that doesn't have a built-in beeper. It's nice to see here in the PID tuning tab that they have tweaked the PIDs a little bit. Not very much. Most of these sliders are at the default 1.0 position, but they have adjusted them. It means they've made some small attempt at PID tuning. That's good to see. They've also tweaked the filters a little bit. That's nice. Hopefully they have done these things to make the quadcopter fly better. Uh, and uh, the default flight modes are, yes, amazing, excellent. These are the four flight modes that I installed by default on all of my quadcopters, and they have not shipped it with horizon mode. I hate horizon mode. Horizon mode should die. Okay, if you like to fly horizon mode, you obviously can do what you want, but bind and flies should not ship with horizon mode enabled by default, and I'm happy that they're not. <laughs> what is horizon mode? If you don't know, good. 
Good. Don't, just don't put it out of your mind. <laughs> so there's nothing really major in the configuration that I would change. I might tweak the OSD layout a little bit, but basically everything here is fine. The next thing I need to do is bind my express wireless receiver to my controller, and I've just done that. If you need instructions for how to do that, I've got a link in the video description to my tutorial. But there is an annoying little quirk to Happy Model uh, receivers that you're not going to see in that tutorial. You see, well, I'm not sure how well you can read that, but it's saying model mismatch at the top of the screen. And that's because Happy Model ships their receivers with model match turned on, which is an option that should be off by default, and it's just stupid that they ship it that way. I have no idea why. But the fix is to go into your ExpressLRS Lua script, and you'll see in there it says model match off. You're going to turn it on, and then turn it off again. And that will fix that. And having done that, we should have a solid red LED on the bottom, and we're connected and we're good to go. Well, now it's time to put this guy in the air and to see how it flies. But before I do that, I wanna take a moment to remind you that the work I do on this channel couldn't be possible without the support of my patrons. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me. For as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it, just pick an amount that corresponds to the value that you get from my content, head on down to the link in the video description and sign up. If today is the day that you decide I've earned your support, then you know what to do. And if uh, today's not the day, that's cool. I'm gonna keep making videos. Hopefully you'll keep watching them and maybe that day will come. Okay, let's see here. How does she fly? Here we go. Now I need to tell you that the video you are seeing is being recorded on board the air unit. Uh, and the reason we're doing it that way is that there's lots of tests of how the O3 performs, what its range and penetration is like. That is a known quantity. And what we really wanna know is what's the footage gonna be like that you record on board this quadcopter instead of using a GoPro? That's the big question. Can you use this instead of using a GoPro? Um, you are seeing the footage with a color grade on it. The footage that is actually being recorded is being recorded in the cine-like profile of the air unit. And here is what that looks like. Oh my God, it looks like shit, doesn't it? That's because it's not meant to be looked at, it's meant to be color graded. And I have asked uh, my editor to put a color grade on it for you and make it look as good as possible. In case you're wondering why it looks like a freaking tornado rolled through my property, that's because yesterday a tornado rolled through my property. It did not actually touch down near my house or at my house, but it was very close to my house, maybe a mile away, and it ripped the shit out of some of these trees. Look at this. If you ever wonder if a tornado came by, if you see trees that have been splintered and ripped off like this, that means a tornado went by. Uh, so there you go. How's she fly? How's she fly, boys? Let's just do some smooth flying. It's not bad, it's pretty smooth, except when I'm being jerky. I have got image stabilization turned on because I figure that the kind of flying most people are gonna do with this, like kind of cinematic flying, is gonna want stabilization. Of course, the O3 air unit can also be used with gyroflow if you wanna do stabilization after the fact, uh, just on your computer. It looks pretty smooth here in the goggles though, even without the stabilization. The goggles don't show the stabilization. We're doing pretty good. Oh my God, we're at 3.3 volts though. I need to bring this in. I'm going to kill a battery. We've been flying for two minutes and 30 seconds. That's not spectacular. Well, in case you're wondering what standard color looks like, here you go. And this also has no uh, stabilization on it. This is just raw footage. And although these little guys are not made for acro and freestyle, you know I always like to freestyle them and see how they do. Ooh, that was full throttle, not impressed. Here's full throttle. Ooh, that is just torturing the battery. Ooh, not great handling there. Real shaky through the prop wash.
Ah, uh, did okay there. Did okay. It's doing okay. It's not doing great. But it's doing okay. It feels, uh... It feels like there's not enough power to really do acro. Like, it feels like I'm riding pretty high in the throttle, and as I try and do, like, a punch... Oh, got a little out of sorts there. How are we doing? Ah, oh, that was okay. And we're down to 3.3 volts again. I wonder if these batteries are shitty. I think I figured out why my flight time's been so short. These are high volt batteries, so you have to charge them to 4.35 volts, not 4.2 volts. Uh, those of you who were screaming at me about that earlier, yeah, you were right. Let's see how we do if we actually charge them to the correct voltage in terms of our flight time. Well, I have to not crash, first of all. Whoa, okay, don't crash, Bardwell. I'm having too much fun. I've been flying a different quadcopter and Oh, that's me. I smacked myself in the back of the head. I've been flying a different quadcopter faster and more aggressively, so now I'm like sort of tearing it up here. Decent performance, and they are holding on much better. Oh, yeah, that's better. Oh, golly. Oh, yeah, this is okay. Durability test. Okay, we're still up. Acceptable. Oh yeah, this is way better. I'm a dumbass. Oh, please don't. Okay, good. Please don't crash in the top of a tree. Oh yeah, this is way better. Oh, we're still only one minute, 30 seconds in. I'm just having so much fun that it feels like longer. Yeah, two minutes. That's how you break it. That's definitely how you break it, if that's what you're trying to do. Oh, it flies good. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, okay. Nah, no, I'm good. Oh no, 3.2, 3.2, she's, she's done, boys. Three minutes. I mean, I'm flying a little harder this time, but three minutes, she's done, boys. She's done, boys. She's done. Uh, that was two minutes 30 of hard flying. Thanks. I think whether you're gonna like the Happy Model Mobula 8 HD depends a lot on what you expect to get out of it. When I reviewed the Beta FPV Pavo Pico, which is almost the exact same concept, just executed slightly differently, I kind of approached it like, this is a Cinewhoop where you don't need a GoPro as long as you are okay with the image quality of the O3 air unit. And we could take that same approach when looking at the Happy Model Mobula 8. And in that respect, it accomplishes pretty much the same thing. The Pavel Pico is a little bit lighter. It's got a soft mount for the O3 camera, so it's gonna give you a little bit better footage in a wider variety of conditions. Although, I have to say, I didn't notice any problems with vibration or jello in the footage from the Mobula 8. And the Pavel Pico is about 10 grams lighter before you put the battery on, so it's about 10% lighter, let's say. And I think it's a little less durable. The, uh, the Pavo Pico that I flew was loaned to me by someone, 
and so I don't have it here today to compare side by side. But it was a little bit more f uh, flimsier, the frame, compared to what we're seeing here with the Happy model, which is a little bit stronger. Uh, and in fact, the Pavo Pico, in a relatively minor crash, screwed up one of the uh, propellers and then it was off balance for the whole rest of the review, whereas this guy has taken a couple little hits and uh, seems to have protected its propellers a little better. But there's another way that we could think about the Happy Model Mobula 8 HD, and I suppose this also goes for the Pavo Pico, because both of them can be bought with the O3 Air unit, in which case they are relatively heavy 85 millimeter Cinewhoops. Or they can be bought with the Walksnail 1S video transmitter, and the Happy Model can also be bought with the HD0 video transmitter. And in that case, you've got a little bit heavier than analog, but not by much. You've got a pretty high performance 85 millimeter Acro Whoop if an 85 millimeter can be called a whoop. But that's not what we're reviewing today. We don't have those quads in front of us. We can't test fly them. And I'm only telling you that because when you see various people reviewing this, you really have to pay attention to whether they're flying the O3 version or not, because the flight experience of the O3 version of this quad and the Pavo Pico is very, very different than the much lighter weight uh, Walksnail or HD0 version. They almost aren't even the same quad. If you're looking for a two inch Cinewhoop where you can get 4K video without carrying a GoPro, then the Happy Model HD does the job. The main drawback, I think, is gonna be its extremely short flight time. Under best conditions, under relatively uh, gentle flight, I was able to get about three minutes out of it, and when I started pushing it, it got much, much shorter than that. Now, people are used to working around short flight time. Some larger Cinewhoops, when they're carrying a full-size GoPro, get three three and a half minutes of flight time, so maybe that's not that far outside the ordinary. If you decide to push this and try to turn it into an acro machine, then I think it really shows its limitations. Yes, you can get, it has shockingly good handling for what it is, but it doesn't have great handling for an actual acro machine. And as soon as you start really pushing it, your flight time on the battery goes way down to something like maybe a minute and a half, and that's just not really long enough to have a lot of fun. If you were looking for for an acro machine with the O3 on it, I would be looking at a minimum at three inch props, maybe something like a three inch toothpick, something like the Crux 3.5, as they sell it with the O3, I'm not even sure if they do, but something like that in the three to three and a half inch category is gonna do a much better job. Here, I think you're just giving up too much to have good, great acro performance, even if it is better than expected. If you're thinking about getting the Happy Model Mobula 8 HD, then you absolutely have to also watch my review of the Beta FPV Pavo Pico. As I said earlier, they are almost the exact same quad, but executed in a slightly different way. I think that between the two of them, I think I would probably pick the Happy Model but I still think you should watch the video and decide for yourself. The reason I would pick the Happy Model is that I think it's gonna be just a little bit more durable, even if it is just a little bit heavier. And between Happy Model and Beta FPV, like in the comments on my review of the Pavo Pico, someone asked, hey, I've heard stories about the flight controller burning up. Can you confirm or deny? And I said, no, I cannot confirm or deny. I, I don't know anything about that. But between Happy Model and Beta FPV, I feel like Happy Model has done a better job recently of making flight controllers that don't just die. That's just my personal bias and you don't have to share it. And I definitely think you should watch the review of the Pavo Pico because it does have a few things like vibration isolation that the Happy Model doesn't have and it's well worth looking at that video. In fact, if you're interested in picking up the Happy Model, then there are links in the video description below. I would love it if you use those links because they're affiliate links, and then I just get a kickback every time you click that link and then buy anything. I get money. So great, do that. <laughs> right there down in the video description. But if you wanna go check out the review of the Pavo Pico, it is on a card here on screen and linked down in the video description, and you should definitely check it out. I'll see you there.